Hey what's up guys, my name is Ishan and welcome back to my game engine series. So last time we added circle colliders, make sure you check out that video if you haven't already, it was extremely exciting as always. And so now we have circle colliders, we can render circles, we have box colliders, we can render rectangles, and so what we can now do is take all of that and use it for the power of good and actually visualize our colliders. So this is something that is extremely important. If we look at a scene such as this and I hit play and all of that, you know, we can see that we have a few physics kind of, uh, you know, colliders, I keep saying colliders, but what else am I gonna do? So we can add a circle collider, we can add a rigid body 2D as well to this circle. And then suddenly this is something that we can collide with. Now that's great. But when I start playing with some of these parameters, such as like the offset or the, the radius of the actual physics collider, Collider, I can't see any of it. Playing with this radius does nothing, but yet if I make it like, I don't know, three, then clearly this, oh look, there's a circle in the way, right? So those parameters are almost useless because, uh, I mean, all, I, I say almost because you, <laughs> if you were really cool, um, and we, we're all cool here, but if you were really cool, what you, what you could do is just scale up this circle. So it's currently at a scale of one, to like, you know, let's just say I wanted the circle collider to be like here, and then what's that? That's a scale of 3.56. Then what you could do is take, I don't even know why I'm doing this, this is the worst episode, but then what you could do is multiply or multiply 3.56 by like 0.5, which would give you like 1.75-ish, right? Maybe it was just uh, 1.78 or something. And then now, look, I've done it. <laughs> I've made my collider go exactly where I want, and then still have this rendering here without having collider visualization. I might just cut that part of the episode, honestly. Anyway, the point is, it's nice to have colliders. The other thing you could do, obviously, is like, I don't know, duplicate this circle, make it as big as you want, right? And then just remove like the circle renderer, but obviously you'll keep the collider and then you'll get the same result. A few different ways here, but the point is we obviously need, we obviously want the ability to actually visualize these colliders. So how do we do that? Well, we know that we've added like pretty much all the rendering functions we actually need into our 2D renderer. We have draw rect and we have draw circle. That's basically all we need. So now to actually visualize these physics colliders, we simply need to make like a little button or something in the UI that we can tick like a checkbox that says, hey, please show my visualizers. And then, um, um, throughout throughout like our scene or wherever we want to really do this, we can basically just go through all the entities or at least go through all of like the circle collider components, all of the box collider components, and then just like grab them and then render the collider in the correct space. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna do this in edit a layer. I don't really wanna add too much debug rendering into the scene class itself, because yes, this does render the scene, but all of these kind of overlays, and we'll talk probably a bit about this stuff in the future when we get into maybe designing some more debugging like tools, I guess. But at the moment, um, you know, obviously our scene if we render it, it does it, like, you know, for example, it doesn't show gizmos, right? It doesn't do all of this kind of, I don't know what I tapped in there. It doesn't really do like all this kind of debug stuff because what it's responsible for is actually rendering this scene. So I could obviously easily be like, hey, by the way, you know, when you draw this circle for all the circle render components, let's make another view from the registry, but with circle collider components and then just draw circles. That's fine, but that's kind of like from a code organization point of view, it, it becomes complicated doing it that way because we obviously need to then make the scene aware of, do you want visualization? Do you not want this kind of debug view? Like uh, you, you get all these settings and it just becomes a huge mess. Not to mention that the scene shouldn't really be doing all this stuff. So what I wanna do and the, the way that I'm kind of, the way the design works in my, in my head at least is basically we wanna come in after the scene is rendered and then be like, okay, here is some extra debug fluff. Here's some like graphics that are for debug use or for editor use, I'll say. I wanna render that as like kind of like an overlay, right? I don't want it to be part of the scene. I want it to be part of an overlay. And that way, you know, we can easily toggle off the overlays all of them, right? If we want to see a pure image of our scene and we can kind of manage that externally so that when we actually go through the scene for the use, like we still do on update editor and on update runtime, there's still two different things and that's fine. But when we actually like ship the game, we obviously don't need any of this overlay stuff and it will all be hidden in editor layer, which is in the hazelnut project. It's not even close to being part of the runtime because this hazelnut project, right? Which you can barely see there below the face cam, that does not ship at all. Only uh, the runtime, which we don't, 
have. We don't have runtime yet. We should uh, we should get on that. Hazel, like the big version of Hazel obviously has a runtime and all that. So we will definitely cover that soon. But anyway, point is we want to do it here. So I think we, we already do some kind of overlay rendering, obviously, because we, uh, well, it's part of our I am GUI rendering really, but we obviously render like the gizmos, right? Here they are. So we already have this kind of concept, but this is not an I'm GUI thing. It's going to be our thing, meaning it's going to be part of this thing. So let's take a look briefly at how our renderer even works. So we start off by binding a frame buffer. Sometimes I forget like how far behind <laughs> this kind of version of Hazel, Hazel 2D is compared to like the real Hazel. But um, we bind a frame buffer, you know, we do all of this, we clear it, whatever we set, we clear this attachment to negative one because that's our mouse picking code. Then we render the scene however we like. And then what I want to do, so this is us actually picking the entity, which it doesn't really matter where we do this, I guess, um, you know, uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter where we do this stuff, but I think I might do it. I might leave this as is, but, but before we um, unbind the frame buffer, so what's this function called on update, you know, we'll do on overlay render or something like that, right? Uh, I'm just making this up as I go, by the way. I don't really, I, I think I did, like I, I did add visualization during a live stream, but it's not something that I have open and I'm actually doing it a different way now, surprise. So yeah, um, so let's just add on overlay render. And this is obviously going to be subject to like um, whether or not these this is actually enabled because obviously we don't always want to render overlays. But basically what we need to do, and I'm, I'm sure that we had some similar way of doing this, don't we? We can, can we ask the scene to give us like a list of entities? We should be able to. Uh, no, we actually can't. Okay. So what I want to do is in the scene, I want to write a function that will basically, you know, something like, um, and we'll see, cause this has to, this is going to have to be like a template and this is probably going to end up being, um, so components, a, uh, very attic template here. I always forget like where this goes, but, um, basically what this is going to do is it's going to return to us so we can say, get all entities with. And then it's going to get us, it's basically just, this is just a wrapper over the registry. And then we can obviously do view and then we can kind of expand those component arcs or whatever. And then we can get back from the registry a view of uh, all of these components. And so this is going to work basically the same way uh, that we, you know, like you can do view get, and then you can give a list of components and it will give you that view back. This is exactly what's happening here. It's just that it's like a template and we don't have to interface with the registry directly, but this is just a function that we can call and we will get back a view. Obviously, ent is something that is exposed everywhere. It's an entity component system. It's header only. It has to kind of be, uh, it's made out of templates. It has to be kind of very, um, you know, it's compiled based on, based on its usage. So there's no real way at least no real way that I would want to kind of black box that and, and keep it kind of uh, only like segregated into like the Hazel core library and not into like Hazel not the runtime. It should be, it's, it's, a, it's a core system, right? So we do want to ha kind of have access to it everywhere. Um, but back in editor layer now, in this, what we can, what we should be able to do if I haven't made any mistakes um, is we should be able to do like active scene, get all entities with, and then we can list our components. So what do I want? Well, I basically just want like, let's let's start with circles. So a circle collider 2D component, right? And that should give me back my view of those entities that I should then be able to kind of iterate over. And this is already uh, cannot deduce auto type. It's already going well, but we'll we'll fix it in a minute. So so I'll go through. Um, how do I usually go through all of this? So for, oh yeah, auto entity view, because they're going to be entities. Okay, let's see if we can fix this. So cannot introduce auto type, and this is upset. Oh, well, I haven't actually returned this. Okay, that's better. Um, okay, so we'll go through all of these entities. And now what we're going to do is basically uh, render it. Now to render it, we need to render it in a particular pass, which I think we are still part of. And I think we might want to restructure the rendering a little bit in the future, because at the moment, if we take a look at our on update function, yeah, so we do this before we unbind. We don't really have the concept of render passes. Uh, however, you know, we, um, yeah, so we should just be able to composite all this on top and it will still be rendered to the same frame buffer. So it will still be like depth tested and all that stuff, unless we specifically disable that before we get into like certain draw calls. But what I'll do is I'll do renderer 
2D uh, begin scene. Uh, actually, see, this is what I'm... So begin scene, what does that do exactly? Does that... That doesn't clear anything? No, it just sets up... Sets the uniform data and starts a batch. Sure. And then we need to give it some kind of camera. So let's give it the editor camera and then end scene. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through like all of these uh, components and then I can do view dot get circle collider 2D component. And we also need the transform component. These are the only two components that we need for a particular entity. Um, uh, actually, I probably should try and use our API for that maybe. Oh, maybe not actually, because this this only can return one component at a time. So I can do view dot get should be able to, and then we can we should be able to do like transform, transform and circle collider two D. Let's just say like that, right? And then what what's that gonna do? Ah, I think it's because this view doesn't. So yeah, so we do have to place that in there as well. Okay, cool. So we've got the transform component, and oh, maybe I'll just call this TC. And then the CC turns <laughs> the circle collider 2D. Um, so what we can do now is obviously access all of those parameters and draw the appropriate circle. So let's just draw the actual circle first. So we'll do render a 2D draw circle, and then we can pass in a transform. So that will just be like the trans the transform from that transform component. Uh, then we have like the color. So for the color, we want something fairly visible. Now in Big Hazel, 2D colliders are actually blue because uh, the green color is reserved for 3D colliders because NVIDIA physics is green and we just went with that. So that way we can kind of separate them. Now for this engine though, for Hazel 2D, I'm not sure that we should make it blue because uh, there are no 3D colliders because this is a 2D engine. So maybe we should just make them green and we can make them like, well, I guess as visible as possible. So we can do zero, one, zero. Could make them a little bit brighter in, in uh, you know some areas as well but this has to be a VEC4, but we can, we'll, we'll make it green for now like this and we'll adjust the color maybe later if we want to be all artistic. Thickness, um, maybe like 0 0.05 or something like that. Actually one, yeah, cause it's a filled in circle by default. Fade will leave as is and entity ID doesn't matter. Okay, so now we're, ne we're now drawing this at the correct transform and everything's great. However, obviously we're not taking into account anything else. We're not taking into account uh, the offset, uh, let's just run this to see if it works, but we're not taking into account like the offset, the radius, we're about to do that. Um, Cause otherwise this is just going to be drawing this circle. What? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, let's just clean build this cause this is just falling apart. Okay, so after a clean build, we're up and running. Let's add in that circle collider and we don't see anything. Now, one thing that's worth noting is that obviously if it's being rendered exactly in the same spot, then that won't render. Um, but however, if I offset this, uh, it's offsetting that as well. Okay, so let's do this. Let's bump it up a little bit. Now with the circle, cause I'm worried that it's just getting clipped. Um, with a circle, w the only way we can apparently draw it is using a transform, but that's okay. So what we'll do is we'll uh, have our own kind of transform, which will be TC get transform. And then what I want to do is I want to translate, uh, it doesn't really matter where we do this, I think, but what I want to do is translate that transform, which maybe I'll be a little cooler here and do like this. I'll translate that transform like somewhere. So let's do like um, 0, 0, 0.01. That might be too much. But this way we'll be able to push it forward a little bit. And we'll also have to use like the scale and all of that to actually take into account the radius and the offset. So we'll have to translate it X and Y as well based on the offset, which we're about to do. Um, and I should probably save the scene. We're still not seeing it though. So it's it might not be because of that. Um, why are we not? Uh, this should be okay, right? Begin scene and yeah, well, I mean, we should be rendering this stuff, right? I shouldn't... Uh... Okay, so about five minutes into my debugging, I realized that I'm doing renderer 2D begin scene and renderer end scene, not renderer 2D. And renderer end scene does absolutely nothing. So the point is whenever flushing this. So let's... That's... Yeah. Great. All right, so now if I add my circle collider, hopefully we'll see it. There it is. Okay? So we have a circle collider now. Again, we've pushed it ever so slightly forward, probably too much. 
because you can kind of see that it's sitting on top of it. Now, there are ways, obviously, to just composite it on top at exactly the same position. Um, how will we do that? Well, I don't think we'll get into, like, the specifics of that. We could, like, disable depth testing or something, but that's not going to be good because um, then it'll be on top of, like, everything, and we don't want it to be on top of everything. Furthermore, when we twist the camera this way, we actually want it to be on top as well. Like, we want it to be on top of... of, of the actual object that way. Now, the other problem is if we rotate this, that's not correct. That's not what that collider is actually like. So basically, long story short, I don't want to use this existing transform, even though that's kind of the easy way to do things. We need to build up our own transform. So what do we know about this? Well, first of all, it's a 2D collider. A 2D collider means there is no depth, there is no Z, none of that exists. So if we take the existing translation, just the X, Y is really what we need. So with that translation, I then want to offset it by that uh, circle collider offset. So that becomes basically our position. So translation, uh, we can probably make this like a GLM vec2. We'll take that translation, we'll offset it, and that will be our like translation, I guess with that offset. Now the scale of this or the size of this, we can also make up because, and we can make this a matrix because the scale is going to be whatever the trend, whatever like the scale actually is. Um, and actually we might not make a matrix out of it immediately, but whatever the scale is. Um, so let's see. So X, Y, and the radius kind of is like both the X and Y scale. So scale plus, would it be plus the radius? Maybe it would be times the radius. Yeah, it should be times the radius. So we'll do times GLM, I guess VEC3, and then we'll do the radius, which is here as well. Okay, so we have the translation, we have the scale, rotation, none of that matters, especially for a, well, it will matter for a, like a box collider, I forgot the word, but for a circle collider, obviously you can't rotate a circle collider really anyway. So we just do that and that should be good. So translation scale. And now out of this, we make our matrix. So it's going to be GLM uh, translate, GLM mat four. We'll have a, a just a fresh mat four here like that. And then this will be our translation, which we have to make a VEC three. So we'll add a zero there and then we'll multiply GLM scale. And that will be a GLM mat four storm going on outside. Damn. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that. But it's very loud. Um, okay. So we've got scale and then this will be the scale. Okay. And then this transform is what we'll actually put into here. So this should now more or less be perfect. But the one thing maybe that we want to do, we'll make this a VEC3 and uh, we can still probably, you know, do this, uh, but let's kind of adjust the offset. So what I'll do is I'll make this offset a VEC3, but I'm going to, again, do that thing where I push it like forward ever so slightly. And what we'll actually probably do is push it. This will be either positive or negative depending on where the camera is. And we'll actually, there's actually a very easy trick we can do to kind of see if the camera is behind or in front because this is more or less in 2D space, so to speak. Okay, so there's that translation with that offset. And then uh, let's go ahead and just add that into there. And we should be probably good to go. Okay, so loading up the scene, keep forgetting to save. But if we take a look at that circle collider, okay, so radius 0.51. Um, I guess we probably did not want to uh, multiply that. Uh, well, that's because it's radius, not diameter. So we do want to multiply that, but we'll double the radius because obviously um, when, when we actually draw the units we use are like, a, it's, it's w w the diameter matters because it's like a one, it's a one meter diameter um, uh, circle. Okay, so selecting that circle collider, now it's in the right place. So what we can do is uh, we can expand it to an arbitrary amount. So like, let's just say we increase the radius to something like one. So that looks correct to me. Let's make it like one point, maybe like two, no two is too much, 1.8 or something like that. So that should be right on the edge. So if we hit play, uh, we got Trent. No, okay, so that didn't quite work. Um, and also we're still doing this on the, um, we're still doing this on the update, which we shouldn't be doing. Let's actually make this a rigid body. That's probably why it didn't work. 
And you can see, yeah, okay, the, the, it's really throwing me off that it's rendering like that. So maybe what we can do is also, it'd be nice to render it in the runtime as well, ultimately. So this begin scene, this is gonna matter whether or not we're in the runtime or not. So let's go ahead and say uh, that we'll add our, our little switch statement. I, I'll probably design a slightly better way of doing this because yeah, this is a bit annoying. Um, but let's just say, uh, maybe I'll just do if the scene state equals play, then we probably need to ask the scene uh, to get the primary camera entity. Um, and then from the camera, so this gives us an entity, right? And then from the camera, we can get component, uh, camera components, and we can ask for its camera, and we can begin scene with that. Not much error checking, but that should be okay. Uh, and then uh, the transform. So the transform is camera dot get component transform components dot get transform. So that's pretty messy, but gets the job done. And then finally for else, we will begin with the editor camera. So that should be good now. And uh, I think now we should probably see it properly. The thickness of the circle is probably too much as well, but. Let's take a look and I will actually remember to save the scene this time. So circle collider and rigid body 2D, control S. Uh, let's play this, that's fine. You can see it actually comes up obviously in the correct spot for the runtime. Let's now take that radius and make it like two, 1.9. Uh, and now you can see that's, that's perfect. And then what we can also do is if we scale that back down to like 0.5, I can offset this wherever I like. This is way too fast though. Um, let's maybe move it like, uh, you know, yeah, it's negative point, uh, so point 0.5 is the interval, which is not, uh, very slow. <laughs> um, let's make it like one, maybe point 0.5, right? And then you can see there that it's interacting correctly. So that, so now obviously we are rendering, this is our actual object and we can still move this around and scale it around and do all of that stuff with it, but it has its own kind of offset that it can take into account. And that's actually what's used, or at least it should be. That does not look right anymore at all. Um, still a static rigid body. So now the offset and the rate. Yeah, what's going on there? That's not correct at all. What happened there? So the scale must not be taken into account correctly but I multiplied that, didn't I? So the radius times two would be one, one times 2.16. So I think that should probably be correct. Transform component scale times the radius. Yes. So that's just times one. And it did get bigger. So maybe we're actually sending in the wrong scale when we start on runtime start, but really, I thought we got that sorted out. Oh, we don't we don't get the scale at all. Oh, okay, well that's probably why. So when we actually hit start on this, let's save this crazy scene. I don't know if control S, but oh. how we still have not made a control S button or like a save, not a save as, that is just beyond me. Okay, so if we close this now, let's actually make this work. So we should have the transform somewhere else. Here's the transform. So what I wanna do is basically um, make this radius be, uh, multiplied by, and the thing is, cause it's a radius, it should be half, but radius already is half. So you can picture it this way, radius, if the radius is set to 0.5, which is where it is by default, we have a size of one. So we can, we should be able to simply, I don't know what I hit there, simply multiply this with the scale. Now the problem is scale has three axes. Which ones do we care about? Well, circles are more or less uniform. So we're just gonna use the X axis and call it a day. Um, and I'll probably rewrite this the other way around because primarily we will be probably using the scale. But now we should hopefully get the correct behavior from the scene. That's interesting because I thought I had done that, but I guess not. So now if we hit play, um, that's acting correctly, which is good. Okay, so we've done circle colliders. Everything looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and uh, jam it in as well for um, for not circle colliders, for the other type of colliders. I'm just, I have a way with words today. Uh, for box colliders. So I'll make this a little scope. 
just so it's easier to deal with. And then we're basically going to use uh, the same kind of situation here, but with box colliders. Yeah, that's why I can't even speak properly. So I'm just saying situation. Situation is like my little go-to word that I insert if I have no idea what I'm talking about, which is pretty common. Okay, so translation, what is it? Well, we, we have that same offset. We just don't have a radius. I don't know if we have a size offset. I think we do have a size offset, which we can then multiply, I guess, with the scale. Right, so we have a size, uh, but this does not need to be multiplied by two. It simply becomes size and we can multiply that by scale. This is a vec two. Um, so we'll have to, if we do this, uh, well, Z scale this is just for rendering it. So I guess it doesn't really matter. We can just leave that at one. It does not matter what the Z scale is. Over here, I think we set it to be evenly proportionally scaled like here, but it ultimately doesn't matter. Um, and then translation obviously will be plus that offset. And uh, honestly, I think that's it. We obviously want to not draw a circle though. We'll draw a rectangle at that transform with the color. And that's pretty much it. Um, now, the, the we have a thick, this is just, this is just used line rendering, doesn't it? So it doesn't, doesn't need any of that. And then I'll make this maybe slightly less thick, but that might be too thin. We'll see. Okay, so that didn't work at all because I forgot about rotation. Um, so, uh, rotation, <laughs> cause circles don't really have rotation, but we have rotation for our, that's circles for our boxes. So let's add in that rotation, TC dot rotation. The only one we care about is Z though. So it's just going to, going to be rotation dot Z and we don't have to offset it or do anything to it. And it's just going to be a float. Let's just not probably make this thing out of it. Let's just multiply this with a rotation matrix. So rotate GLM map for one, uh, we could shove in the previous matrix into here, but I prefer writing it this way, to be honest. And then this becomes GLM. Um, oh, this is the axis actually. So VEC three will simply be zero, zero and one because we're doing the Z axis and that is the value of rotation. Now that should be in radians. I don't expect it to be in degrees, but this is, has been a while, so we'll see. Now, have we done this right? No, okay, so actually the angle goes first. So we'll just shove that in like that. And I think we're good. We'll get rid of rotation there. We should now be good to go with our hopefully correctly rotated boxes. So here we go. Um, but the scale seems wrong. So what is, so the scale is 6.5, all of that stuff. And the size, oh, the size is, yeah, of course it's half extents. Sorry, I forgot. I, for some reason I thought it wasn't half extents. So we need that times two again. So when we do the scale, we'll take that size, we'll multiply it by two, and um, we'll, yeah, Z, Z scale doesn't matter, so we'll leave it as is. And finally, we have correctly uh, drawn colliders. They are a little on the thin side, so I think what I'll do is, um, well, the specifically the circle is what I'm talking about. So let's make this uh, maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.01 or something like that. We'll make them twice the size. But otherwise, you know, those other ones are being drawn by lines. We could simply make, um, we could probably just, yeah, that, that looks pretty good. We could obviously modify that line thickness. We do have a way to set that line thickness when we draw the lines. But other than that, I think we're pretty good to go. And that works in the runtime as well. Okay, awesome. So last thing we need to do is obviously make this like an option. So that's going to be pretty easy. Um, we probably should manage this a little bit better. Uh, we'll maybe have a UI planning episode at one point, but show physics colliders equals false. So if that is true, we do this whole thing. Um, now, because we'll be rendering other stuff, I'll actually just not kind of exclude this, we'll always do this, even though we technically don't need to, because I think we'll be drawing other stuff, um, not just colliders. So we might want to draw icons and all this other stuff. So I'm not going to hide, I'm not going to stop like this from happening. But obviously, if this is all you are truly doing, you probably want to just basically do something like if not show physics colliders return, and then obviously none of this code will run and you'll be good. But I'll do it this way for now. Okay, so this is our Oops, these are our box colliders. These are our circle colliders. Okay, looks good to me. And then finally, let's make that UI option. I think we have like a settings panel or something. No, I, th I totally thought we did. Uh, where, where are all of our panels? So we have a stats panel. That's it. 
All right, well, that's uh, fun. Um, let's make a, this, I guess we can make a settings panel. So I'm going to begin, where's the end here? We probably should design some kind of panel manager as well. This series really is endless. Uh, settings, maybe this will be the viewport settings. I don't know, but for now, we'll just add a little checkbox called show, fi uh, show physics colliders, and then we will Add in that show fits colliders option, hit F5, and we should be we should be brilliant. We should be good to go. So the settings panel, I'll, I'm just gonna dock it up here, or maybe I'll dock it down here. Um, and then obviously at the moment we're not showing anything. I take that on and we see everything. Uh yeah. What more could you want? You guys see that? Yeah, you can. Um that's physics colliders. Now there is one little thing left, as I mentioned, and that is, but what about if we look at it from this side? Well, the lines seem fine, but the circle is not on top of this anymore. And if I reset this from its offset to be in the right place, we don't see it at all. We only see it from this side. So this is going to be a little exercise for you guys. How would you make it so that this circle collider is visible from this side as well? If you want to contribute and like solve this issue, then you can go to the GitHub page, which I definitely wasn't pre prepared to explain this, but um, if you go to the repository, you can open an issue being like, you know, circle colliders rendering are always on top of geometry or something like that. And then I will discuss the pull requests that come in. You can make an issue out of it. If it's just a, a, a bit of code and you want to make a discussion, maybe I should make an issue and then I'll let you guys do it. But maybe in the future, I'll make issues so that we can all discuss this and propose solutions in one place. But uh, yeah, if you have a way to solve this, um, open an issue and we will, or a pull request, and we will talk about it next episode. Uh, otherwise, if no one opens an issue, then I'll show you my solution for this, uh, which I think is actually already in the dev branch of um, of this Hazel 2D repository. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button. Patreon.com slash the channel is the best way to help support this project, these videos, this video series, my whole channel my whole career, everything that's going on. So huge thank you to all of the supporters that make all of this possible. Next time we will continue on doing whatever it is we need to do in this never ending engine. And I'll see you guys then. Goodbye.